I get a lot of questions in my MicroPython video tutorials on YouTube and in my Discord server about what are the best serial programs to use on Windows or Mac to transfer files back and forwards between the operating system and your ESP32 or any other development board running MicroPython. My go-to IDE for developing in MicroPython is Visual Studio Code and I use RShell to put files onto my tiny picos and back off again. But there is a much easier way of doing it for most people, especially for those that are new to Python or MicroPython and are new to working with MicroPython on a microcontroller. Let me introduce you to Moo. Code with Moo is the website and Moo is a Python development environment that is targeted towards beginners. It's not a full blown feature rich IDE like some of the more advanced programmers out there would want to use like Visual Studio. But for writing Python and MicroPython, it's actually quite intuitive. And not only that, but if you go to the download section of their website, there is an alpha, it's currently alpha version two. And with this alpha, there is support for ESP32 development boards. So you can download the alpha for either Windows or Mac OS, install it, and then you'll be presented with the Moo IDE. I've currently got the theme set to dark. There are three different modes. There's dark mode, there is a contrast mode, and then there's a light mode. Moo looks really simple, and it is. It's got just basic features, but some pretty interesting ones. So the first thing you need to do to get Moo talking to your ESP32 development board is to go to the mode and make sure you've chosen ESP MicroPython. It's for A266 and ESP32. If you don't choose this, you won't be able to talk to your ESP32 or A266. If you don't have the alpha, then this won't appear at all in the list. So you choose that as the board, and then what you can do is click on files. And what it does is it shows you two file lists. Now I've currently got a tiny pico connected to this machine. And what it's showing me on the left are files on my tiny pico. So on your device, it's a file system on ESP board. And on the right hand side, it's showing me any files in my current folder, my working folder. And in this case, it's a folder that Moo created for me called Moo code. And it's just in my user folder. You can't view files directly from your microcontroller, you need to copy them over. So to copy one over, you simply click and drag, and it asks me, do I want to overwrite it? Yes, I do, and it'll copy it from my tiny pico over to my working folder. From here, I can right click on it and say open in Moo, and this is the file. Just to show that this is actually on the microcontroller and it is working, what I can do is close the file view, open up my REPL, and as you can see here, it's tiny pico with ESP32 pico D4. So if I type in import test, hello world from tiny pico, I can now close my REPL, open up the files again, and I can change this to say goodbye world from tiny pico, save that, drag it back over to my tiny pico, close the files, open up the REPL. Goodbye world from Tiny Pico. So it's really easy to move files back and forwards between your working files and your microcontroller. It's obviously got a tabbed view, so you can open as many files as you like. So if I close the REPL, I can go and open up my main.py, which is just some example code for the Tiny Pico, as you can see here. And it's got full syntax highlighting for Python. And you can open up as many tabs as you like. You can create new files just by clicking the plus symbol. You can obviously load files from the file system and save them as you need. Some other interesting things that this app has, kind of like in the Arduino IDE, is you've got a, a serial plotter. So if I close the files and load the plotter, as you can see here, this would be reading any serial data coming out from the microcontroller. Right now I don't have any data coming out of here, but if I did, it'd be plotting it automatically for me. Some other nice things about the IDE is it's got some basic tidy up ability. So what it's done now is not just tidied up my spacing and everything else about my code, but it's also made my code more Pythonic. As you can see here, my SPI class has been broken into multiple lines. My brackets have been broken into multiple lines for my print statement. So it doesn't just fix things like your spacing and your indentation, but it also actually reformats your code to make it look more Pythonic. Lastly, Code with Moo has some really interesting documentation. So if you click on the help button, 
will take you back to the website and it takes you to a tutorial section. And in the tutorial section, you can see that there's how-to guides, there's the discussion channel, and there's the actual tutorials. If we click on go for the tutorials, it covers all sorts of stuff like where your files are, how to work with those using Python 3, because don't forget you can use this just to code your regular Python. It doesn't have to be MicroPython. It doesn't have to be Python on a, a microcontroller at all. Creating web applications. Here's the tutorial for MicroPython on the ESP. Goes into what a REPL is, visual debugger, the plotting data, how to view the log files, and most importantly, how to report bugs if you find any. So it's quite nice, very easy to approach, and it's a great way to develop MicroPython code if you're a beginner to MicroPython and don't want to work at the command line where you have to manually copy files back and forwards by typing commands on your keyboard. So that's it. This is Moo Alpha 2. Don't forget, you'll need the alpha version if you want to work with the ESP8266 or ESP32. It does crash occasionally, but it dramatically simplifies working with MicroPython, especially if you're a beginner to the platform. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. I will catch you all later. Bye.